I've got to go and check the air before we start here. What? Go and check your bar before we start. No, you've yeah. just done it on the camera. Where are you I, going? I, 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 I thought the second. You've, had, you've been quite good on Twitter. Have I? I would, I would uh, if I was to summarise in an emoji, I'd do a little fire one. You don't like drinking grover? Never had it before. You never had a bottle? No. Are you losing points for being on the podcast every second? Um, good. Um, yeah, I uh, <laughs> Thanks for that input. Before we get into the villa, I had a bit of a... Because it would be silly to start with villa. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Villa View podcast with Chrissy Dolan on my right and myself, Dan Bardell. Seem to be having some serious chair issues here. I look like I'm Alan Wright sat next to you, but I'll try and sit up the whole way through, which could prove a struggle. Bit of a funny one. Tonight I'm still feeling a little hazy from Reading, if I'm being honest. Yeah. yeah. Well, hazy and flat, really. Still, yeah, still flat. Like flat. Just it's a, a very Dolan word, flat. I think you must say that every time you come on here. But I just feel now that I'm... Because I had this reputation of being really positive and really upbeat. And Not then, nowadays. And now I'm kind of getting this, um, this real kind of, um, you know, negative... This negative vibe around me. And, um, and, yeah, but it's just... I can't help it. I mean, I've got to be honest. What you see is what you get. You're probably the most negative person I know at the moment. Um, um, what, what I'm seeing at the minute is just not good. No. And um, we were there Saturday. Yeah. We were there Saturday, but I've got to be honest, when it came to compiling notes, I got quite bored. And like uh, when people listen to Tom Julian, I just switched off. I just completely yeah. switched off. Yeah. And what, the notes, on Saturday? No, no, we're doing my notes, and my notes are not complete. But I've just, I'm just, you know, I just did just. Think, I nearly didn't do notes tonight. I just thought, you know what? Let's well, we were going to start go the show. We were, we were going to start the show and just go. See what happens. See what happens. I did feel like we could just do a bit of a Steve Bruce Aston Villa. Just we haven't really been given any tactical instructions. We'll just go no, out and see just, what sticks. Yeah. S- s- see what happens. So, yeah, as you said, we were both at Reading. Just a bit of a nothing game, really. It's been more exciting after the game with all the Mings stuff, really. The rather, yeah, more exciting than the game. Do you want to start, start on, on the Mings? On the Mings, uh, the Mings stuff. I mean, we can do. The first thing I've got down here is we've won one game in ten. But we've no, lost. We've no, lost. Uh, only lost two, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Seventeen. I mean, one in ten is not a happy start. I've definitely gone in with glass half empty there, glass half dull, and with the one win in ten. Start there, but that's, that's the facts of the matter. We're not winning enough games, and we're not going on the run that we need to go on. And I. And I'm not getting on Smith's back here, and I'm no, not for, for for a second saying that um, that I'm that I'm against them because I'm not. I'm You're very um, pro Smith on this channel, aren't we? Very well, yeah. But I had a kind of an epiphany on um, on Thursday night. I was watching uh, some pre-match interviews with uh, Sari. Yeah, and he was talking about you know being given time and about being given time to create a philosophy at a club, and everyone buys on about about the Sari ball. Are oh, you talked on about this in the train? On the train, you know, I, I just think vaguely um, recall. I just think he sort of talked about the top three clubs in the country at the minute being Spurs, well, being Liverpool, Man City, and Spurs. Yeah, and then he spoke about okay, how long's Klopp been there? Three, three seasons. Three, four years. Three seasons. Yeah. This is his third full season or second full season. And where are they now? Top of the league. Yeah, they've had a little blip, but he's but he but he he's created an identity. I mean, I have this blip with Liverpool is making me laugh. They're having a bit of a blip, blip on their top. That's one game all season. I know. I know. I love that kind of blip. And then Pep, you know, didn't win anything in his first season. They had a very average first season for his standards. Yeah. And now look where they are. They've got a complete identity. And then Tottenham, they haven't won anything, but with the money they've spent and the budget they've had, they're constantly top two, top three. And they play some great stuff, and they haven't signed anyone in two transfer windows, which is a first. Yeah, I yet can't they think still of many clubs that have done that. Yet they still are there or thereabouts. But um, I just think with Smith, I think we have to give him time. I'm completely, uh, completely, you know, Smith in Dean Smith, Clark and Blue Army, whatever you want to say. I'm, pr- I'm, I'm there, but I just feel at the minute we look like we're going backwards a little bit with the squad of players we have. We look like we're going backwards. I was thinking of something earlier, a bit similar along the same lines of what you were thinking. was just bland. It was you bland. Know? Do you think, when the when, when he first came and I thought, right, the players have bought into this. And when, uh, obviously, Solskjaer's come into Man U, gets, just gets it, doesn't he? He just Straight Every away. every movie well, makes at the moment is a right movie, gets it, everyone's on board. Yep. Do you think, at the moment, because people know, we have spoke about this last week, because players know they're probably not going to be here next season, I think, do you think they're just not buying into it, they're not on board? I think so. I mean, there's a piece in the Birmingham Mail, there's, what, eight or nine players that are going to be out of contracts. Um, Hutton, Elphick, Steer, Whelan... Yedinak. Yedinak. 
Um, I mean, there's, there's more. There's more, but I can't think off the top of my head. But oh. um, but I think when he went in there, there was no talk of of a philosophy or a future or a blueprint. It was like, right, let's just get, let's just get going. And the more the more he's been in charge, I think the more Persil's come out and talked about a philosophy and a structure and an age, uh, you know, an average age, etc., etc. And I think the players know. Like Yednak, Whelan, Hutton, possibly Elphick, there's going to be the majority of that team that played on Saturday aren't going to be there next season. You think and the they, majority? And they, and they, well, Elf, well, Elphick, Hutton, Whelan, Yednak came on. Tyler? I think Tyler will be there. I don't know. He must have a couple of years left, Tyler, on his contract, I would well, think. I don't, I don't think. And I think they know that. And I think. I think we've kind of uh, Tammy you, weren't there, you know, and you could, but, but he's playing for he's playing for possibly a, a Chelsea contract. So he, he's got he's he's still playing for something. He isn't playing to stay at He's playing to further his career. That's that's what he's doing. That's yeah. why he's still buying them in, you know. So I'm not worried about his performances or or his or, or his goals. But um, I think the, I mean, the, the nucleus the thing we don't need to worry about the nucleus of that squad aren't going to be there. Aren't going to be there next season, no. and they know, and and you can see it. You but can do you think they would have known that when we were flying? They must have known that then. No, it's, have really, an well, idea. it's like anything when we're, when you get results. There's no talk of the future. There's no talk of next season. There's, there's no talk of you know if we were still carrying on playing the way we played under under Smith when he first came in, there would have been no issue. There'd have been no problem at all. But the fact that we're not winning games, we're drawing games, we're still conceding games, we're, we're we don't we don't look as exciting. We don't look as 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 as, an, as attractive on the eye as we did. That's no. when the questions. That's when the questions by the fans start to start to get raised. And Saturday was was awful. All I mean, it took it took from what I can remember, it took El Ghazi. I'd be surprised if you can remember eighty two minutes to make a run to a driving run towards towards the corner flag and whip the ball in. And, that's and what did he did? Tammy almost went one up. I was saying, to you, just just drive, just make a run, you know, because we were we were right there. Just, just you know, just drive at the at the defender, make the defender think, make him bring it down. And that's what Jack does so well. He just gets the ball and he just runs. He just he just drives forward, and that's when he gets taken down. He, he, he doesn't cut inside. He doesn't cut inside and stop and play it back. He just drives, and he makes the cutter pass at the last second. And El Ghazi did that once in the entire game, and it was all, almost effective. And that's what we, we weren't we weren't aggressive enough. I think that's a valid point, actually, because when everyone talks about missing Grealish and Twan Zaybe, and we've done that to death, I don't really want to talk yeah. about that tonight, if I'm being honest. But the other thing when we were playing well, and we were going to Middlesbrough, and we were going to Derby, and we were winning 3 0, the players on the wing, El Ghazi and Balassi, were absolutely know, absolute yeah, animals yeah, yeah, down yeah, the yeah, wing. Yeah, they were, they yeah. were flying, they were. Bags of tricks they were El-Gazi taking against people West on. Brom as well. He like, didn't know which way they were going to no, go. No, yeah, Elgar's was... against West Brom was Phenomenal. unbelievable. Yeah. Like, so I look at the two wide players on Saturday, Adoma and Algarza, and they just both seem devoid of any form of confidence to me. Adoma can be hit and miss anyway. Yeah. But Algarza had a lot of ball in that second half. A, lot. a load of ball. And he just looked, he just looked nervous and tentative. Yeah. And a little bit afraid. And it, you know what we were asking today is it rocket science? You get the ball and you just go forward. You just drive. I mean, I will say he did try and take people on, but invariably get tackled yeah, when he did. On, but he kept on coming inside and playing the wrong ball or the wrong part, or, you know, or the wrong the wrong layoff. It, you know, it's I say it's not rocket science. You just drive at the defence, and if they bring you down, well then you're going to earn a free kick. And then we've got the height and the presence and the the creative. Ability to whip a great ball in, and, and you know, I've just seen this season, we score a lot of goals from set pieces. I mean, we nearly scored one from a set piece in the first half Elfric, yeah. on Saturday. I didn't even see that either. I was like, oh, I mean, where were you, mate? I was there, <laughs> I saw it. It's like, hit, hit the bar in, in the result. Yeah, yeah, that definitely definitely happened. I've seen it, I've seen it back, yeah, and I can confirm I saw it yeah, yeah. at the time as well. Are you a bit worried that we're at quite reliant on crosses and we were scoring a lot of goals off crosses but they've dried up slightly now because we're having games where we're drawing nil nil we haven't got we Obviously. haven't got the energy in the mid in the middle of the park but apart I said from again really we haven't got well we haven't got that McConnor's full of energy no, 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 he is, no, no but we have but, but he, he's not a crafty player you know he, he, he's not a he's not a silky player he doesn't beat three men you know what I mean? what's I'm saying I know so we haven't, but we haven't got that we haven't got that in the middle of the park to play through the middle we haven't got that player that can just r- glide past players, hence why we're going out to the flanks, whereas before we had it with Jack, and then we had it with Balassi, we had it with Kodja, and we had it with El Ghazi. Were you surprised we didn't see Kodja earlier? Yeah. 
I the subs felt a bit light, didn't they? Well, I think he's the other one that'll be that'll be off next season. I'd have thought so. You know, I think there was the talk that he was he was on the way, but they, 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 we didn't let him go, or he, he couldn't, mean, we couldn't let anyone else no. go. So uh, I think he'll be another one that's that's probably going to depart. Um, but I was surprised. Yeah, I was surprised that Smith didn't make that they didn't make the attacking subs sooner because yeah. it was crying out for it. Tom Carroll came on as well, but didn't have a not chance. a display. No, 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 no. Didn't not his much, fault. Didn't, no, I just didn't have much of a chance. Just a, just a, just a crap game, you know, to 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 bring anyone on to, you know, um, one that'll that'll not live long in the memory. I'll tell you that. What I will say is, I thought it wasn't met because the, the allocation was quite small for for a wide fans. I will say, I, I thought the fans stayed with the players and the team. Yeah, I just no, thought the was atmosphere no... was good. I there agree. wasn't any moaning. No, nope. and it wasn't a great game. It was not pretty on the eye at nope. all. But I felt like the fans were behind the team, which was quite encouraging because there's been a bit of a negative atmosphere at Villa games the past mm. few weeks. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I thought the fans were excellent. They were. They were. I'm um, just, you know, the, I thought the Reading fans were pretty poor. There wasn't that many of them. But um, we uh, again turned out in force, and uh, you wonder, you wonder um, how long, how long it's going to be until the fans just like. <laughs> Just done with this, like you know. Well, that'll never happen. But you just like because I know I'll never them. be done with it. No, you. no, but just like you know, I'm sort of even wondering about going to Brentford in a few weeks. Oh, it's you'll like, be there. I'll be there. But you, you just day like, off, mate. You just like I, I just know what's going to happen. <laughs> what's going to happen? I mean, I nearly just accidentally closed down the audio on the podcast, so that would have uh, so, been up. a disaster. You'll be at Brentford. Come on, I'm going. You well, got, I'll see. You'll be there. See Don't be silly. Be silly, Billy. I'll see if I can wangle anything. You'll, you'll be there. <laughs> yes, really. But here, uh, second half, lots of ball, but no way of breaking down a poor Reading. Because I, oh, they were I thought fun. in the first half Reading were actually okay. They had a bit of a go. Second half, I felt like they were they were like, okay, we'll take a point. But then the manager comes out afterwards actually and says, no, nah, that's not what uh, I was unhappy. We didn't win because he was he was unhappy not to get all three Smith, points. Smith thought we played. We played really well in the first half, and we were, we were back to our old selves. Uh, nothing I've seen in the last few weeks. Don't made agree me think with that, that at all. Uh, I found at half time on the concourse. Aston thought we played really well in the first half. I mean, let's bear in mind he'd been drinking for forty eight hours. I right thought there. I thought we played a lot better in the second half. Personally, we I, kept the ball a lot better. In the you second stayed half. in the concourse actually, but the second half I was out at the start. We did start the second half with good intensity. In the queue for the loo. Okay, but we started with a, with a fierce intensity. I, I would say we were we were we were up for it that first 10 15 minutes, and if yeah. we'd have got a goal, I think we'd have gone I mean, on and scored yeah. a few oh, more. Yeah, but I think, yeah, the goal I'm, invariably doesn't come. I've used that word a lot tonight. Invariably, their keeper, their keeper was good. You know, I think um, he's they got him on. Did they get him on deadline day from Arsenal? Yeah, he was definitely previously at Arsenal. Martinez, he's, very he's good. a decent goalkeeper. Very, very good, great save he made from Tommy Zetter, but that was about the only better chance better than their had. previous goalkeeper who's played for Arsenal, Manona. Manona, he's yes. a bit of a clown, isn't he? Yes, he did not play. Manone. Yeah, but we did get a clean sheet. As I uh, you, I mean, you were very excited to have a photo after the game. A little bit too excited, if you ask me. But you wanted to celebrate the clean sheet. Well, I celebrate the, the, the clean sheet. The fact that I thought Mings was a beast. He was a beast. He was properly solid. As Villa debuts go, that was a decent that was debut. Good as I've seen, you know, I mean, he's he can walk off the pitch. Him and Alpha can walk off the pitch. He, I thought Carnage again. Carnage had a really solid game. Carnage was I was impressed with. Which was so. If we have to take positives, the. The negatives over the last few weeks have been, have been, bad in defence and shaky goalkeeper. I thought the keeper was very very solid, and I thought Mings was a good eight out of ten. And I thought Elphick and him really sort of complemented each other very well. Yeah, I saw a few people saying obviously they played together before at Bournemouth, yeah, but well, they, they hadn't. They hadn't. No, they had, well they played. They, they just they, missed they, each other. But they, they were in and around the club together. No, I think Mings must have joined while Elphick was still there. But I'm almost a hundred percent sure they didn't play a game together. Okay. Obviously, they don't know each other. They're mates, and they certainly yeah. know what you know how each other play. But the thing with them, um, I think it was good. To, it was good to give Chester a rest. I thought that was oh, important. He needed, he needed that, um, and it's good to see that we can give our best defender a rest, and we can still look pretty solid at the back. Well, we've given our best defender a rest, and but we've actually kept a clean sheet, yeah. which we weren't doing with him there. But yeah. again, him playing with an injury, you're doing him no favors, no. and you're doing yourselves no favors. No, nope. really. I mean, hopefully he'll be back fit soon because for me, he's still the best centre back. And the club, when you pick our best team, he's in there. Of course, he is. If he'd have been next to Mings on Saturday, fully fit, I'm still sure we would have kept well, the clean sheet. We sort of look at this and we go, right. Well, whenever Chester's fit again, do you bring him in and then put Mings at left back? Me personally, yes, but but he looks too solid to be allowed. He looks too. He took me by surprise, Mings. He obviously I knew he was a big lad. I didn't. I've always was... thought Tyrone Mings left back. Yeah, that's. I thought he was a yeah a full back. Yeah, good yeah, on the yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
very, very good. good on the ball. Him and Twanzebi. Oof. That could be a ball. That could be a really on. good. But mate, Twanzebi will not be at no, Aston Villa next season. Made, if Solskjaer's at Manu next season, Twanzebi yeah. will be in and around the first team for Manu because he'll back fit. him. If he can stay fit, he'll back him. Twanzebi's a class act. To Absolute be fair. quality. Yeah. Very yeah. good on the ball. But yeah, were you surprised by Mings? I can't claim to have no, seen. I mean, I was surprised. I was surprised at how big he was and how much of a of a presence he had. He was barking the orders as well. Yeah, 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 which was great. But I, I didn't. I wasn't surprised at how, 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 how well he played because I know he's a great player. And I think when when people like Eddie Howe come calling for you, you've got to be good football. Well, he was one of their first was. signings when they got promoted. Mings, but he just hasn't worked for him due to injury. It'd no. be like a few of the players we've bought in the years. You've got to be a good footballer first and foremost if you want to play for um, for Eddie Howe. So all in all, I was really impressed. And I think it's another great option. We can we can slot him in at centre back or. I mean, I'm yet the same at fullback, but from what I have, from what I gather, he's he, he's also excellent at left back. So, yeah, I'm just going to go to cut to a few a few questions. Yeah. John Inslee, I don't know how we're going to answer this. In all honesty, John, I know it's a million dollar question, but what is the problem at the moment? It seems like no one is stepping up when needed. He's saying that, but we're just talking about the defence did step up on Saturday. Yeah, they did, didn't they? they did. Yeah, um, it's the it's the kind of oh, I don't know. It was like usually it's kind of. The the attacking side of the team bails out the defensive side of the team, but I felt on Saturday it was the defensive side of the team kind of bailing out the attacking side of the team because yeah. there was nothing going forward. But we had we, we looked really solid at the back, and I, I was never in fear of losing that game. Oh, come on, you, did you hear in, yourself? In the the last, did you hear yourself? The no, last five minutes, we're going to concede it. We're going to oh, concede it. Nonsense. You were nonsense. Ask, uh, ask I, was, I, was, I was assured. I was assured. Uh, right, this I guy is lying through I'm his sure. teeth. Cheers. He kept saying to me. Oh, this is typical Villa. We're gonna we're gonna lose this, and it was me that was going. No, no, we won't. No, we no, won't. It must have been somebody else. Man, this. I mean, to be honest, I'm not going to get you confused with anyone else at Villa. Must have Villa been game, somebody man. else. I can't believe you've come on here and tried to pass that line. There was a geezer actually at half time with a big Dublin S bonnet. Was there? I didn't yeah, see him. You were there. I mean, I obviously just thought he was you. Yeah. <laughs> to yeah, be yeah. fair, I'd had a few. Tapped on the back of the shoulder. I'd had a few beers. To, I can't believe you've tried to sell that. What a, what a I lie! Was, I was ice cold. <laughs> I hope someone I hope someone pipes up in the comments who just happened to be sat I'm going to ask Nathan Dorr Nathan Dorr DJ who's Nathan Dorr who's Nathan Dorr no, Nathan Dorr the DJ Dorr? that was sat next to us you've killed him there ruined his career sorry mate right sorry. Is, uh, he on, is he on Spotify probably I don't know mate I'm, I'm not on Spotify myself so let's go back to the questions because you've just um, you just sorry, completely disrespected sorry, Nathan Dorr there sorry mate uh, sorry. James E9930 bit sick of the end of the world reaction amongst Villa fans every time we don't win a game genuinely believe a section of the fan base has a real negative impact on this club and the players that represent it and I don't think every club has this problem discuss I would disagree I think every club does have that problem you ask Everton fans you ask uh, Southampton fans you ask West Ham fans you ask Newcastle fans you look at Liverpool fans here moaning you know Every every set of fans has has it. They do. Uh, I think socially the, the fact media that we're just it. yeah the fact that we're kind of in the middle of our little hashtag world. You know, we just see it. We just see it week in week out. Um, let's, let's forget social. I mean, we've made the board up, but let's forget social media. You can't. Such, you can't. It's, no, I'm just saying. Mass- separate social media. Forget right, that. Right. Pretend that doesn't exist. Okay. I'm talking about at the games. Right. The negative atmosphere. Right. At Villa Park, I definitely think it I plays agree. a part. But I agree. as I said. I actually thought the smaller allocation, and I've seen a few, but I mean, we're not away day regulars by any stretch no, of no, the imagination, no, no. but a lot of best. people that are said to me, the smaller allocation, it's a, it's a better atmosphere. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of people say that on, so on, I've just said forget social media, but I've seen a lot of people <laughs> say that on social media as well, that because it's a smaller smaller allocation, that you course not become as negative. Because I really felt the fans stayed with the team, I said, and it wasn't pretty. There was nothing for them to stay, to stay there for, but you're right, they did. And um, but I just I go back to the point that I've made on previous shows. You know, we've had such garbage served up to us over the last decade, and it's been a decade. When you, when you break it down, it's been a decade of just of just awful football. I mean, I've been with my wife virtually the whole time. Villa have been rubbish. She's never known me when Villa have been good. I started going out with her not long after. Uh, Martin O'Neill. So my first season with my wife was McCl- was uh, the end of Julio. McLeish. So mine was. So she's only known maybe miserable about Villa. She's she's never seen. Why well, she must wonder what's Dan like if Villa are good. Whenever we went like seven away games in a row. And I mean it's amazing. She's amazing. She stayed with me. 
Absolutely. I mean, a lot of people tell me I'm punching above my weight anyway. Well, but it's amazing yeah. she stayed with me because she's never known what a happy-go-lucky guy I can be because well, the whole time I've been with her, my football team has been a travesty yeah. in the main. Yeah, my message is probably two years of O'Neill. Yeah, I said she knew you when it was good. She kind of knew it when it was, was semi decent. Although I'd, the first game. I'd like to have known you when Villa were good. Because obviously I didn't know you then. I wonder what I'd like to see what you were like. I was just positive. I mean, I've seen the enthusiasm being knocked out of you just by being involved in the podcast. I was as positive as I am now. I was as ice cold <laughs> as positive. I was on, on Saturday. Oh, God. The lies that he's telling. Honestly, what? Pinocchio over to, to my right. I mean, one for me to say with my nose, but <laughs> what are you on about? But. Like, it's, it's weird, isn't it? Like, that's mad. I've only just thought of that now, that my wife won't have known me when Villa are good. Exactly. So, like, if you're, I say miserable, you, you're miserable, so how do you think the, the, the other 42,000 inside Villa Park feel on a daily basis? A lot of them have miserable. seen success. I was yeah, so long ago. I grew I grew up, and I was nine, obviously, when we won the... Co- or eight, actually, sorry, when we won the Coca-Cola Cup in 94. Mm. Then two years later, we win it again in 96. Yeah, yeah. Four years later, we get to an FA Cup final and like, hey, we don't win. But there's me thinking, this is this is good you stuff. You know what? We finish top six every year. We get to Wembley every few yep. seasons. This is decent. Mm-hmm. I'd have never, if you'd have said to me, young Dan Bardell, look at what you're going through in 2018, I'd have been like, nah. I never thought Villa would get relegated. Ever. And now uh, I'm thinking, are we yeah. ever going to get back up? I don't know. It's I madness. Mean, can, I, I've forgotten now what it's like to be in the, in the Premier League. We spoke before about this. We... We are now. I don't know how we've gotten to this tangent, by the way. But let's roll we're with ta- it. It's talking about like roll with it. Talking about what well, we're talking about um, atmospheres inside Villa Park, and we asked why it's been so bad. But this is why. I'm trying to think if it was great when we were top six, and I feel like even it, then it was a little it, negative. It was because people want the only. You always want more, don't you? You always want more. I mean, you know, you have a three bedroom house, you got a five bedroom house. You know, which one have you got? Three. <laughs> Put on a five. But you know, you can't really. You know, you can't really. You can't really win, so uh, yeah, totally. It was it, there was moments under O'Neill where I think, I think fans were on his back, but looking back, looking back on it, for me, it's clear to see that it's just been a decade of absolute garbage. Do you feel sorry for Dean Smith walking into that? Essentially, that's what's happened. We were at pretty low ebb when he took over, and he got us going again. Yeah, he's kind of me, fallen back into. Is, if anyone, if anyone gets it, it's him. You know, if anyone gets it, it's, it's Dean Smith. But. Um, of course you feel sorry for him because you think every hurt. every time you think like we thought that Tony Ja came in and cleared out the mess under Lerner and then we realised that he's made it worse than it ever had been and then we look at Lerner and go God Lerner actually wasn't that bad because he never gambled the club he took us down mate on been, 17 points yeah but he never I don't look back on that with much fondness no but he never gambled the club to the point where we were going to go out of ex- existence <laughs> So this is a debate for another day, probably. It really but he is. made a lot of mistakes. Well, of course he did. But so I'm you not think, saying he did no good. I'm not saying that. But you think so? You think like you know Tony Jaws come in and he's had to pick up all the mess, and then you think okay, right, and then you realise what Edens and Swires have had to, to do when they've come in. The mess they've behind, had in, a lot behind the scenes. The mess they've more had to, to come, inherit. More to come. You know, and then Bruce, and then the, the big wages, and you said Marrera was on forty-five grand a week, and it's just like I mean, don't quote what? me on that. It's just what someone's told. You me. thought, yeah, you thought that's what. You'd... If that is true, that is unbelievable. Unbelievable, but it would, but, but would, it, would it surprise you? But then was that were the new owners in at that point? They were, yeah. But is, Bruce and the whole thing and the Mendes the Mendes thing, you know. I mean, but if that I, is true, that's one of the silly so yes, decisions. I do feel sorry for Dean Smith to go back to your point. I do feel sorry for him, but. Because he must hurt. He doesn't come away from it. I mean, obviously, he's coming on camera saying we played well. But I'm sure he takes no joy from that game. And he, oh, he has hurt. to. But he, I get, he must hurt. But like I, get, a, I get stick for coming on here and being negative. He can't go out to the, to, to the media and the press every week and, no. be, and be miserable. He, he has no, to no, back no. his players. Yeah, you say that. So he's, when he's saying, oh, I thought we were back at our best. I thought we were, we were, we were close to, to being the way we were under the first, when it first came in. He, he kind of has to say that because he, he did go through a phase of giving them a hard time. That's what I was going to say. And that's not, that's, that's not going to, in the end, get you anywhere. But I'm just playing devil's advocate here. As we've said, and I don't need to keep justifying it, we're very, very pro Smith here yeah, yeah. in this podcast booth. But when we were winning games, he was coming out and saying, oh, I think there's things we can improve on. His interviews were very refreshing. Yeah, because whenever it's you win 3 0, when again, it's gone back to it's not, he's, he's, not, he's not doing that. But when you win 3 0, you're like. I kind of thought we played well on Saturday because we didn't. We had a, in spells, we might have done 15, I think 15 minutes in the second half, we were good. But I didn't see, what he, he saw. Just, I didn't was, see what he saw in the first half, if I'm no, being honest. I didn't either. 
Well, I know a few few fans have brought that up on the questions. Have they? Yeah, it's like what I've missed that. You know what did we? What did he see that we that we didn't see? If you scroll down, there was a couple of there was a couple of sort of Dean Smith post match uh, post match interview questions. Yeah. Um, I mean, and I, I agree. I don't know what he what he saw, but I thought we were a lot better in the second half. And if we're going to take a positive out of that, it's it's Mings and it's the clean sheet and it's Kalinic. Kalinic, I got to say, going back to Kalinic, because I don't think we spent enough time talking about it because we ended up on some weird tangent. But he was very assured, wasn't I he? Thought he, was he wasn't good. the goalkeeper. I saw him in a no. part of the way before. He was coming out and dealing with things. He just. I like that in a goal. I always think if you're a goalkeeper, if you've come out and been assertive, but you've made a mistake, I can forgive that. Yeah, yeah. It's when people make mistakes from being tentative that I don't yeah, like yeah, as a goalkeeper. Yeah, if you're coming out and you try and be well, brave and win a punch and you don't win it and something happens, I always think, you know what, at least he was decisive. Yeah. So the back four, no. He's decisive. He's yeah. And he was he was that on Saturday. That was what I liked. But you look at Alisson last night, being decisive with that header. <laughs> and he almost <laughs> headed it straight to Carroll. the whole game, man. I have no idea okay. what you're talking about. At the end, when, when Alisson came out and, he, and tried, to, tried to clear it with his head and went what straight did, to Carroll. Oh, uh, really? I don't remember that at all. I must have been on my phone. I do that quite frequently mm. when I'm watching football. Uh, uh, but no, home. you're right. I, I think, yeah, I think, and that's been, that's been the problem with... Um, with Nyland and, and Kalnitz in his first couple of games, there was a real like a real uh, lack of intent to, to come for the ball, uh, and then when you start, start flapping around on, on your line and you come and you go back, then you, you just look silly and you, you 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 give no confidence whatsoever to your back four. One criticism of James Chester, who obviously we love, is he's not vo- not really that vocal. No. Do you think maybe Kalinic benefited from having two vocal centre halves in front of him? Because as we said, Mings was far from the orders. Elphick chucks the orders around. Yeah, but Elphick's been there under Chester as well. You know, Elphick's been there. Um, but I'm saying having two that were that were organising. Sure, um, yeah, I'm sure he did, but but it shouldn't make a difference. Shouldn't make a difference. He should know. Yeah, I mean, really, that, the goalkeeper should be leading yeah, it. Course, I always look think. At to Michael, all the great goalkeepers talk and. Bar orders, you know. Um, when I play five a side in goal, I like to organise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've gone back to outfield nowadays, but I'm sure you do. When I was in goal, I unfit. I also <laughs> like to try and organise from the back, let people know what's going on. Well, they always say the best, the best captain in a team should be um, should be a goalkeeper or, or, or a centre back because you can see the entire pitch. You know. Someone's asked about the captaincy, actually, and I'm the struggling to find who is that. What did you make of that? Um, we, I think we were surprised that he had it over Elphick. But then somebody said, "Yeah." This, so the question was, is the currency nowadays a bit of a you know is it it doesn't really make much of a difference who's actually wearing the armband and you look at last night didn't at one point didn't Cresswell have the armband and then you see Snowgrass I'd imagine giving it stacks and barking orders but that's that, longest serving player I think that's and that's why Hutton's got it that's to do with 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 a respect thing of being the longest serving player um, and he probably would be in that squad wouldn't he Cresswell what yeah, I'd imagine so. Because he left. I remember hearing Ming saying that he left at Switch just before he had left. So probably three, four years ago. He's okay. Three. Yeah, he, he was definitely there under under Blitz. So yeah, that I think that's what it is. Because it was funny just seeing Snodgrass last night. And you missed that, like just that sort of I you know, really was really getting stuck in it. And um, yeah, so I mean Hutton. I mean, I think Hutton's pretty vocal. Hutton got in the uh, team of the week. Did you see oh, that? Yeah, saw that. Yeah. I mean, I can't remember sitting there. I don't. I didn't sit there thinking he had a bad game at all. But I don't remember sitting there thinking he was really good today, like I did with uh, the two centre halves and the Isn't goalkeeper. It, yeah. What do you think that's about? I'm sure. I mean, it's, sure it's it. not, well, it's all. It's a. It's a number based thing, isn't it? Yeah, stats so with who's good. Be, it could be a touch thing, or it could be a dribble thing, or it could be a completed, uh, most complete, most yeah, pass. Yeah, I just complete. don't. I don't remember thinking he had a bad game, no. but I don't remember sitting there thinking. He, he, didn't, he didn't stand out. He didn't stand out. No. Someone's uh, said here, Mark Parry. You think that Dean Smith might have three at the back in mind, using more attacking minded wing backs as an option? I mean, he won't be doing that this season. Just might explain bringing in two left footed centre backs, even as a plan B. I don't know. Just a thought. He needs to bring his own players in. I like three at the back. I've, I, I've liked never it. really. Have we ever played it? Oh, we have played under Gregory and Little. That's so far back, I don't remember. I don't remember. I mean, we've played it in panic scenarios over the years when the manager's on his last legs. They tend to go to three at the back did and it did not Bruce, work. The Bruce did it for, for a little bit. He tried it. it. Remember when we had a Samba, Samba Jester yeah, and yeah, a yeah, John yeah, Terry? Yeah, yeah. That didn't work. No. As, as, as a three at the back. No. I always think managers do it when they can't think of anything else. Anything but I else? think utilised correctly, it can be a dangerous system, as we saw with England in the summer. Yeah, and it's what. it's what. Um, but you have to have the right wing backs. 
You have yeah, to. and that's I don't think we've got the personnel at the minute. So no. for me, but next season, long term, do you think if you get obviously the no, the no guy we'll Freddie who, Gilbert next we, season? Well, I'm, again, I'm surprised that he's gone back, but I think I can say what I can probably I think there's a lot of behind the scenes issues with that. Um, the FFP and, and maybe a respect thing from from the point of view that he, he wants to help his, his current club out, but um, it's all about who we get in. It's all it's all. About, I mean, I would love to see. I'd love to see modern day fullbacks at our football club. I would love to see it because I haven't seen it in years. I've not seen a r- proper, apart from Ram Burchant, Kyle Walker Kyle and Burchant. Walker was the one that, but again, that problem of you bringing a the player, they do well. And they go off and load. I mean, yeah, Burchant didn't do great, to be honest, but Walker did well. Walker was fantastic. And um, then that made his career, really. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. yeah. Now he's playing at the best club in the country. The theatre club. Yeah. Um, I would love to see more. I mean, who would you, if you could, you know, if you could bring in two full backs? Anyone. Or no, uh, from the championship. From, from, yeah, from the championship. Who would you bring in next season? It's an easy one to say, but just Rico Henry. From what I've seen of him, he, he fits what you're saying. He's mm. athletic. He's pacey. He's good. He's good on the ball. He knows how to play under Smith. He's been with Smith at Warsaw and Brentford. Yeah, Brentford playing what I would class as being the right way. Yeah. So he'd be he'd be one. Obviously, we've brought this Gilbert to play. Have, you, have, you, had a to, have you had a chance to YouTube him or anything? Have you? I saw a video. I mean. I mean, we could put together a podcast best bits and we'd look unbelievable on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, of course. But yeah. the reality is it's probably did, bang uh, average up most of the way through. As did Kozak and yeah. Helenius. Yeah, but you see a video of him and he, he looked very good. But I think, which is where I think Bree going out on loan. I yeah, think I think that's that to get was... him playing. And we'll come on to the transfer yeah, window. Yeah, yeah. But I think those two, they're the two for right back next season. Al Mohamed will rock up at Sheffield Wednesday in the summer, I'm pretty sure. Of course you will. And then... It depends on Neil Taylor but, and depends what we do. If we get Mings and he ends up as a left back, you'll see another left back come in for sure because you need two players. I mean, it's it's all looking really good for next season. If you if you sort of break it down and you can see you can see that there's a there's a plan in place, a real structure and a real plan. Um, I think you know the amount of loans players that we sent out on the, on the final day was was I think was pretty clear. Yeah. To the way he wants to go, he wants to get these kids football. Hitchell's he Burgers won't. Sausage, sorry to interrupt you, it's a great show, guys. I mean, he hasn't watched it yet, so it's a good, pr- good prediction there. Despite the lows of our league position, are you positive like me for the obvious shoots of transformation that will come with the changing of the guard come the season's end? I think I am. I think it's... Uh, I am, but... Like, with the out-of-contract players, I think it's a good time to have someone like Dean Smith. Whereas if those players are out of contract and you haven't got what I perceive as the right manager, it's dangerous. But Smith, when he was at Brentford, his first pre-season, he... Been so many players off, and he brought in eighteen new players, and just well, drilled go, them. I, can go I right away. no, no, yeah. but I remember watching a documentary on Brentford's pre-season, and they were drilled. They knew what they were doing. Was this? It was on Sky. Because this was after Warburton, wasn't it? And then they had this new. They had a few other managers possibly but before. They, have, they had this like this new Brentford had this kind of like stats thing yeah. that they brought in, didn't they? And it was very much buying players on a on a on a stats. I mean, it's not Basis. gone badly for them, has it? No, it hasn't, and they're picking up again. By yeah, the looks oh, of they it. look good at the weekend. Five two. Do you see some of their goals? No, I haven't seen it. No, unreal football. Just in time for Villa to rock oh, up of course. at Brentford next of week. Course. Of course, of course, naturally. Why wouldn't they start playing well just before Villa are about to go there for their annual hiding? We tried to we tried to talk Kevin around, didn't we? About giving his brother a ring and giving him one more year. <laughs> You were going, yeah, but he deserves to play at the highest. I was like, would you shut up? Oh, I don't want to get would into you... that. We're leaving Grealish today. I don't want shut to get... up. I don't, I don't want to get into it. Oh, you've uh, for now you remember that, but you don't uh, remember yourself uh, sitting there what? at death's door in 90, it, 90 minutes. Give it stacks about, oh, you know, he deserves to go there bigger. I was like, would you just we'll keep talk your about mouth that shut? in a future podcast. I'm just, being a, I'm just being an honest guy, mate. I'm an honest person. I try my best anyway. So if he goes in the summer, I mean, it's his fault. In, re- in reality, my opinion is completely irrelevant. You think, you think Jack Reedish is going to say, five, Dan Bardell thinks, thinks I should go. I'll probably go. I think you will. I think you're that influential. Well, it's very kind of you, but I think that is completely false. We've managed to get through half an hour without mentioning the thing that's been all over Twitter. Talking about the worst game we've had in a long time. Half an hour's worth. It's not I bad, mean, is it? I'd like to say it's the worst game, Donna, but I'm pretty sure I've sat through worse at some yeah, stage yeah. in the last few years. 4-1. Yeah, there's been... Oh, yeah, that was the... I think my view of that Sheffield United 4 1 defeat is tainted <laughs> by the fact we somehow managed to get some good videos yeah. out, out of it. But the Mings mm. stamp, I mean, somehow we've managed to we sit both there and not yeah. see it happen. Oh, because we were, it was like eight minutes stoppage time. We were like, eight minutes? Where'd that come from? He 
because you kind of saw him on the floor. You thought, oh, he's picked up an injury, like as you do. I don't even remember there being a stoppage. I mean, she's not a good seller no, for me and you on Saturday, no, to be fair. I don't, well, we were just sort of like having a laugh, but I don't remember it at all. Looking back on it, I mean, I, I know the, the Quest highlights, they, they cut it out because it was a bit gruesome, but. I mean, his face did not look good. Oh, it was horrendous. It was horrendous. Um, I mean, if you think there's some unpleasant scenes in that booth, you want to see that, that picture. Really was not good. But you can see Mings. I mean, the reason this, this is going on is because of what happened under when he when he when he stayed on Zlatan. Yeah. Again, I, did, did he get did he get charged for that? Five match ban. Did mate. he get a five match ban yeah. for that? I mean, that wasn't great. But you know, I, so that's I mean, you can't not. Have a, have that in your head when you're looking at this because you just it's similar. Well, it's, it's identical, but he didn't. He, he there would look to be absolutely no intent in that whatsoever. And straight away, straight away, he went back. He he, he knew he had obviously stood on him, and straight away he was like you could see him. He was worried. He was like yeah. visibly worried. I always think player player might intentionally like leave their foot in. They might intentionally like stamp on someone's leg or something. There's no way a player goes out to intentionally no. do what he, what has happened to Oliveira's well, face. Roy Keane. <laughs> Roy Keane, yeah, tried to end someone's career. Enough, but think, obviously, yeah. the Man U fans were jumping on the high horse on uh, yeah. on Twitter, but I presume Eric Cantona fly kicking, <laughs> Eric fly kicking as a well. Palace fan and yeah, 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 uh, Roy yeah. Keane deliberately trying to end yeah. someone's career is, yeah. is OK. Yeah. But he can't, oh, he slows no, down, it looks bad to slow down. Everything does, yeah. yeah everything but looks... there's no way in that time frame he's like meant to do it. You wouldn't even have th- have, have like the time to think, oh, no. I'm going to do that on purpose. No. I I mean, I was reading the comments because he, he tweeted. He, because I didn't even realise what had happened until I saw his tweet. And he tweeted saying, you know, yeah. proud to wear the, the Claret and Blue, you know, great debut. Um, awfully sorry about Oliveira. Hope he's okay. I was like, what, what, what happened to him? So I sort of, obviously, you, you, search, you search Twitter and yeah. you see a picture of him, you know, like covered in gashes. I was like, oh, oh no! Like, what's he done? Like, what, what's he done? Because again, we didn't even know he had, he'd stamped on him. There was no whispers from the. There was no like talk of it in the crowd after the game. There was nothing. And then you see it the next day, and you're like, oh. But you, you really, you really look at it, and he doesn't I'm not right. back. You know, I'm not back. I'm not like because he's a Villa player. I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, you know, uh, he, he did nothing wrong. But I honestly don't think it was intentional at all. I don't um, see. How, I just don't see how it could be. And the other thing is, I don't see how he could ever get charged because really, no one knows except for him. Well, exactly. Only that. Well, only he knows what went through his mind. And I, I don't think. I don't think you really have the time to even think about that. It's not like they'd had a dust up before the before that happened or anything. Yeah, there was either. no. There was no. I think yeah. with the Ibrahimovic one, I think there'd possibly been a dust up before mm. that happened, which probably again leads people to say, "Oh, he's done that on purpose." Mm. There's nothing, nothing like that. Player doesn't go out to deliberately do that to someone's face. Absolutely no, no chance. No. But we do wish him all the best. Yeah. With the, with the recovery. And you know, and a, a real blow for Reading because um, he, he's a decent goal he's scorer. A good, he's a good footballer at that level. Um, although you know, we did keep him quiet, didn't we? Well, yeah, we did. We kept Reading quiet mm. in general, t- to be honest. I'm just trying to see if there's any more questions. Uh, Related to the Reading game, so Daniel Southall says, "Do you think the witch hunt of Mings following his alleged deliberate stamp on Oliveira will affect his performance?" No, I wouldn't think I so. I don't think so. I don't think so. He, he wouldn't have taken the Twitter because he would have known, and anything he had said on 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 Sunday would have um, people would have been you know giving him uh, abuse, and they did. And uh, you know, if you read some of the comments, you know there was some damning there was some damning replies. But um, no, I think he seems like a pretty. He seems like a pretty level-headed, pretty strong, strong-headed bloke. Um, I've heard him talk before. I remember his interview when he uh, joined Bournemouth, actually, and the reason I've remembered it is because he had a really nice Vivian Westwood shirt, and that's just stayed with me. Oh, yeah? I went out and got one not long after that. Well, the, the white one with the big yeah, silly collar. Brown uh, yeah. brown buttons, yeah. Um, I just remember thinking, though, during that interview when I wasn't looking at his shirt, he speaks well. He does speak very well. He's very well, he used, to, he, used to be, um, he used to be an accountant, didn't he? I don't know. Um, knowledge from you. Yeah, he used to be. Did you get the notes for me? Did you? He used to be an accountant. Uh, he only came. He only uh, sort of started playing professional at, at a quite a. He was like nineteen twenty. Got How old picked, is he now? He must be twenty five. Well, he could go ugly, but I'm going to be honest. I can't um, be bothered. No, he's a very intelligent guy and um, speaks very well. Certainly for me, if he stays with us, you could see him being a future captain. Yeah, I, again, I was very surprised by the vocal presence of the lad. It was a great debut. Impressive debut. Yeah. Let's move on from Reading now. I've had enough. Yeah, me too. I think I've said everything now. In my very brief notes, I think we've covered everything. But we probably did that in the first five minutes. Let's talk about the transfer window because it's slammed shut since the Villa View last 
did a podcast, although me and Rollo did do a video on it, but we just want to garner your you, thoughts. You were half asleep, weren't you? Mate, that was ridiculous. That was one of the most ridiculous things I've ever done for the Villavia. <laughs> Stay up till half one to see a file transfer through when I've got work the next day. That was absolute madness. So hopefully if you did watch that video, you enjoyed it. Me and Rollo did decide that it probably didn't make much sense because first we were so me. tired. First time I thought, oh, I, I, thought, thought, I, thought I, getting, I thought I was getting like a, you know, impromptu invite, you know. But I mean, imagine how scared I was expecting to see Rollo's face on the screen and you're there. Whoa. It, wasn't, it wasn't the B, you know. No. So let's go through it. Completed ins, Frederick Gilbert, Tom Carroll, Courtney Hawes, Tyrone Mings, and we've obviously also recalled Jed Steer and Tommy Elphick. Oh, Kalinich as well, cheers, yeah, he was BBC, very, or wherever I called that from. Well, he was obviously at the very, very start. Yeah. So I think this must be just deadline moves that I've done down, done down this, here. No, we'll hot, sure I don't know, because Ross McCormack's on there as well, yeah. yeah. Well, they've left Kalinich out on the website I went on. Yeah, well, there you go. Good from you, though, Dolan. Out, James Bree, Jack Doyle Hayes, Russian Hepburn Murphy, Scott Hogan, Ross McCormack, and Callum O'Hare. Right, let's start at the top. No, you're not making the rules here, mate. I was going <laughs> to. I had a plan of what I wanted to Sorry, do. Sorry, right. I had, saw an interview with Dean Smith where he said that Callum O'Hare and Scott Hogan, it was Hogan I wanted to focus on, to be honest, right. have gone out to get games. So I just assumed when Hogan went, that's the la- especially when I saw an interview with Hogan, I thought, that's the last we've seen of him. I've now had some different thoughts since I heard D- Dean Smith say that. I'll tell you why. For those of you who didn't uh, didn't read Scott Hogan's interview, I'm just going to read some extracts from it. This is from somebody Actually, who, who hasn't really got much, you know. I just on the I quickly, quickly copied this down before we before I came out. So Hogan said, "I spoke to the Gaffer on Tuesday. I don't know he's been trying to get me for a, for a while now." I know he tried hard in the summer and I was very keen on coming. Unfortunately, circumstances stopped the move from happening then, I'm presuming injury. But this month, I've done a bit of battling in a villa and I've done all I can to make this move happen. I'm finally here and I can't wait to get started. There's no hiding from the fact it's been a difficult time at Villa. I've been there for two years and had relative success, but personally it didn't really happen for me. That's disappointed me, but I knew the manager here wanted me and he wanted me in the summer. When someone wants you as a player, it's massive and he knows about my background and the people around me. So you read that, to be honest, from a Villa perspective, That's it, it doesn't sound... No. no, but I don't think it is. I've had some thoughts since then. You, you, what you, from what you've read there, yeah, or what I've read out, you would think, that's it. But then Dean Smith saying he's gone out to get games. When I think about that he's going to be a completely different team next season, more in the Dean Smith, probably Brentford mould, Abraham is not going to be there. No. You've said you don't think Codger's going to be there. No. Keenan probably will be. Yeah. Does Hogan then not come back into it? Because we've offloaded him on loan now. I don't know how much of the wages Sheffield United are, are paying. But f- we are not going to get the money back that we paid for Scott Hogan. Also, we're probably not going to get someone to cover his whole wage. Do you not think with a completely new side next season, a side more in the Smith mould, actually Hogan going there to get games at Sheffield United and doing well, if he does well and gets in the team, which they've got a lot of good strikers, by the way, mm-hmm. that could then benefit Villa next season. Because he could come back and be full of confidence and then we've got a team that suits him more because that's been the main problem with Hogan there's never been a team around him that particularly no. suits his style he had a, a purple a patch purple this patch. time last yeah. year yeah. but in the main Bruce didn't really know how to utilise him and Smith just hasn't utilised him he, Smith has said with Tammy here yeah you can't play yeah. no one else is going to play up front No. but I slightly worry about injuries but that's a, that's a tale for a different day do you think there's something in what I'm saying or do you think I'm talking I, baloney no I do because why would you keep him on the bench Whenever you've, I mean, he hasn't even been coming on. No, so he clearly, yeah. I think I think there was a very, I think it's been a very tactical kind of, in terms of in terms of the the, the outbound players. I think it's been very tactical. Yeah. Um, but I think you know you talk about could it benefit the future. I think it could harm us this season. I don't get why you would ever send a a player that knows that league very well, a player that 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 potentially on his day can score for fun. Why would you send them to a team that? Is you know I still th- I think they're a rival in terms of playoffs. I don't th- I don't think they'll get top two. So if we still want to make the playoffs, do you not think they will get top two? No, I think they might. No, I think it'll be I think it'll be Norwich and Leeds or Norwich Leeds or West Brom. But um, I'm still waiting for Norwich to fall away. By the way, <laughs> since <laughs> since I said it about three months ago, they just haven't. So good. I'm still waiting for it. It'll happen. Um, Bide your time, Dolan. Well, on, on, just on that note, look what's happened to them. They've given manager. A proper yeah, that time fits in with what you were saying earlier. To, to to build to build a structure and build uh, an identity and look where they are now. And they got you know. a stinker start. And they lost Madison. Yeah, and a few and a few others to boot as well. Uh, Pritchard, 
for Chad went last January. So, but they've lost big players. Yeah. Anyway, I bought people through a couple of great for that. Talking to modern day fullbacks, they've got two very good fullbacks in Jamal Lewis and Jamal, Aaron. Yes. They are both very good. Um, so I, I don't know. I just find the whole I, f- I find the Hogan thing very strange. I can see the breed of Ipswich link because get them out, get them games, no problem at all. But to send someone like Hogan to there, it doesn't it doesn't sit well with me. What about the young players? Can you talk about Bree going? Doyle Hayes, great move. Murphy, great move. Callum O'Hare, great move. I think that all goes well for next season. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get them football. You know, as, as much as I dislike Colin, Colin Calderwood, I think you know he know he obviously he obviously knows them. He obviously worked with him. knows knows the way they they um, they play, and uh, I think it just it's all about keeping Hepburn Murphy fit. Really, if you can keep him fit, he hasn't scored yet, has he? But if you can keep him fit. He'll, he'll definitely score your goals he needed he's another one why he's not been on loan I mean he's been injured a lot, he's been injured a lot. He's been injured. another one that's just crying out for a loan but O'Hare I mean I think this could be the making of him you know everyone talks about the Jack move and when Jack went to, to Notts County yeah. and, and ran rings around um, that league so uh, I'd be really interested to see how he does um, we've got we've got about seven or eight players out on loan that I could easily see coming back into the squad next season um, I've attempted you around for Scott Hogan now I just don't know what's. Go- I just don't know what's going to happen with them. I mean, if we had to send them off to somebody below us who play half decent football, like I don't Brentford. know, like, well, yeah, Brent, yeah, Brentford, or you know, someone below us who who aren't going to be a threat. It's Ross Day Bruce didn't try and get him for Sheffield Wednesday. Aren't I just don't know why. I just don't get, and I don't know what everyone else thinks, but I don't see the point. I find that the strangest of all of the outs, personally. I agree, I agree with you. It's been strange. I get what you're like, saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just a thought. I'm not saying I'm right. No, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just throwing it but out. But from, the, from the way that this is, from the, from the structure of these outs, I completely think yeah, he's gone out to get games, keep him fit, keep him sharp, and then we'll bring him back next season. But why would you give him to a club that are like that we could face in the playoffs? Well, he wouldn't be able to play. But yeah. Well, yeah. But do you know what I mean? Like, maybe doesn't make got, sense. Maybe we've got them on Friday. But yeah, to well, they can't play. But yeah, but just say you know, for instance, they're sixth and they he bangs in a hat trick and then they win, they they win and we're we need the three points. And you know, you, these little scenarios could could kind of come to fruition. You know, so yeah, you can end up looking stupid. I agree with you. Yeah, so I just fear that we may end up looking a bit silly with that one. With the youngsters, I actually while I was saying about them going on loan and coming back next season, actually quite excited, man. I'm quite excited by that that they've gone out on loan finally, and that yeah. they're going to get the f- football. They're going to sink or swim. Me too. Basically, me too. Me too. no, I think, and I think you know, if we if, if we don't go up, I think I think it's looking good, looking bright in terms of our uh, our, our 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 youth, and um, it's the way forward now. Bringing bringing um, bringing youth through. That's the way forward. You look at any top player of, of, of any top team, and the majority of those players have come through the system. And for me, it creates it creates the, a true identity of, of any football club. I mean, I'm, I've mentioned Solskjaer a few times, a man year, but he's he's trying to do that, isn't he? He wants to involve youngsters. Yeah. Like you say, it's the, it's the way to go. It works. It works because they get it, you know? And, you know, from the top, the manager. Spurs. Completely. Young English talent. Do you know what I mean? Harry Winks, you know, yeah. he's really starting to, to show his, to show his, his worth. Um, and Carroll was obviously part of that, was obviously part of that institution. I, you know, I was surprised Tom Carroll was 26. I had him in my head has been a lot younger been than that. Around. He's been around. I sort of had a little YouTube. I had a little YouTube um, mooch uh, on, with with Tom Carroll, and um, he was coming through at the same time. Kane was coming through. They were, I think, they were best mates, and um, clearly, you know, one's become a legend and one's slightly faded off. But um, Kane will get back to his best mate. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think Carroll's a really really handy player. But the whole, I mean. We could touch on the whole Leroy Fur thing, and uh, that was you know, a bizarre. About that, that was a bizarre state of affairs, wasn't it? I mean, we're obviously all on the text, all finding out different things on transfer. Day I was day. told it was, it was done. Madness. You were told it wasn't done. Well, I'd, I had a few people telling me it was done, and then I suddenly got one saying it wasn't, and I was like, "Nah, I've heard it from too many people that it's done." And then pff, off we go. But then Carol comes out and said that we were at, we were kind of after him for the last sort of three or four weeks. Possibility he could have been told to say that. Just devil's advocate again. I'm sure it was. It's funny on his Instagram. He put a picture of him holding the jersey up, and the, and Leroy Fur commented on him. Did he? Like, like that? Yeah, the little yeah, the little heart. Did he even play for Swansea the weekend? Did he? Uh, no. Leroy Fur. No. Although him and Ollie, Ollie McBurney seem to be best mates. Carol and Ollie McBurney seem to be like he's a good player. Bezies. So you know, 
I'd love to see. I'd happily see a player like him c- come in next season. I mean, to be honest, it sounds like if you bid for a Swansea player, yeah, off you yeah, go. Yeah, 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 yeah. It sounded like the very t- to be honest, it, mate, it sounded like the team coach was it, Buddy Moore Heath. Very next, strange. Next one, off very, you go. Very you see if you can get a move. Very weird. Yeah, they. You know. I feel. I'd feel sorry. A bit sorry for Swansea because again, I used to look at them and think, great. Oh, they've done well. Yeah. They've got a good blueprint. And they know Brilliant, what they're doing. Yeah. Right, and then the Americans come in. Off the troubles. Yeah, they, they have not been good. Nope. Not been good since. Just while I remember, because I've shut the laptop down because my notes have been exhausted, just to point Villa View public in the direction of uh, Aston Villa's official YouTube, their ladies video. Yeah. Because Dan Rollinson has created a piece. I've not watched it yet, but as it's Rollo, I'm sure it's very, very good. So. I saw. Is it good? Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny because he has his own style now, Rollo. I don't know whether he's allowed like, to implement that when he uses when he does Villa stuff. I'm not sure. Like BB King, you know, whenever you hear that sweet guitar tone, you just know it's B- B- BB King. And you see, you, you, you see those sweet those sweet camera angles. You know it's Rollo. Ah, good stuff. I'm glad you've watched it because I haven't yet. But you you can say it's good. If it's not, then we can blame you. But you blame me, yeah. of course. I'll take the blame. Should we do some questions? Yeah, yeah. Is there anything else you really want to talk about? No, I think we're 50 minutes in. I think we've kind of nestled. Nice. Sorry, me. I mean, feel free to correct me in the comments. If you think I'm wrong here, well, I was a bit worried about this podcast because I wasn't feeling the best before we came. Well, I was in. on. I, I did a radio show last night. Well, um, you've not mentioned it anywhere. Well, I have mentioned it on here. I was. No. I bigged us up actually. I bigged the channel. I oh, did you? Yeah. Well, fair play to you. I didn't hear so that. So I, I, I did a bit of radio last night. Sorry, so you I go was, with your point. I was a little bit knackered, um, and I was like, today I was like, oh, I could do with it. Checking across London. But yeah, but we've done it. Now. And I actually think it's been pretty good, pretty good. to coin yeah. Larry David there for those that watch Kirby enthusiasm. So. No, I've never right. seen. I've never seen a Kirby. Oh man, you need to go on Kirby Enthusiasm. What a comedy show! I know he's what a show. I know he's hilarious, mate. You need to watch that. Honestly, it's brilliant. Or, or Seinfeld. Or I, Seinfeld. I've not watched much of Seinfeld, but Kirby Enthusiasm is unreal. Yeah, Larry David. I know he is time. like yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to watch it. Oh well. Anyone who hasn't watched Kirby Enthusiasm, I have to watch it. Right, let's go to some questions. Noah, who I've not really seen very much for ages, used to come on fan camp every time, week. Yeah. Where's he gone? Absolute. Dude. Where are you, Noah? Absolute dude. Question, you got a pro contract with Villa. Well, I like this question. You can choose your own squad number. What would you choose? Let's relax. Let's relax things down at the end of the show here. Are you asking me? Or are you, you well, yeah, we are, we've both got to answer, mate. Uh, 99. Don't be stupid. Oh, it's Why 99? Because Wayne Gretzky was 99, wasn't he? Who? The ice hockey player. Oh, are you a big ice hockey fan? Because I've never heard you mention ice hockey <laughs> no, before. No, I, my... I, just, I, I just love the fact be that... Be sensible. Would... You're not going to choose 99. I would choose 99. You've ruined that question. I, I don't want to answer choose that. Mate, I was choo- What's so good about Wayne Gretzky? Well, he, was a, was? he was a legend. He was a nice hockey legend. But I just love the fact that he that his number was 99. And nobody else's number was 99. I, mean, I literally didn't say because I like 99 with Flake or something stupid like that. No, 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 no. no just, I mean, you don't need to Google it. Just 99. Like, that's why I love the fact that uh, <laughs> Kamara from Fulham is AK-47. Number 47. Yeah, that's good. I'll have that. He's a terrible footballer. Awful footballer. It sounds like his attitude is absolutely horrendous. But yeah, I do like AK-47. That's, so that's, I kinda, that's decent. And I, like, I would like to have a number that was like completely... Are you just confirming that he was 99? So I'd like I am confirming in case he got it wrong. Because if Tom Julian was sat next to me now, he'd have answered 99, and then we'd have Googled it, and he'd have been 89. American Sports. I'm pretty I'm sure his wiki, mate. he was number 99. And while you look at that, I'm going to answer Noah's question, in case he cares what I think. What would you do? 16, mate. Just because... Fabian Delph? No. Jolly and Lescott. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the real reason is obviously not Jolly and Lescott. Because when I was 16, my 16th birthday, I got a Roma shirt. It was one of my favourite shirts ever, a Kappa shirt. Body. 16 Bardell on the back. Because I was 16. Was no, Tassie was 10, mate. Oh, was it? But I, I, got, I don't know who was 16 at the time. I didn't get it because of that. Cause I got it because it was my 16th birthday. And from then on, I just had a nice affinity with the number 16. So that would be the number that I would choose. Where's the Wayne Grasky thing? No one cares, Dolan. If we could get more squad number based questions in, that would really, really... uh, You're a a squad number buff. I'm a nerd, mate. Absolute nerd. Whenever I buy a classic football shirt, it has to have a number on the back of those. I'm not buying it. What number was Milosevic? Nine. I've got one with Noel Milosevic on the back. I try to take a picture of all my old shirts, actually get them out, see what's going on there. Steve Stoughton? Three or 11. Second spell, he was 11, mate. Mark Trooper? Eight. Oh, you know, mate, people know I'm good at this. Don't test me. Church. It's 26. Oh, and, 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 and then 18. Oh. Uh, Villa Mad. Loves a question, Villa Mad. What's your favourite pre or post match snack? Now, I'll tell you what Dolan's favourite pre or post match snack is on Saturday. Absolutely nothing. No, no, no. <laughs> He didn't eat all day. And he wonders why he's in the way he is. Didn't eat all day. Didn't have anything day. all day. Just asking for trouble. Whereas I had two sandwiches. You had a sensible. And you spilt. You put. You spilt some egg on your jeans. I did spill egg on my jeans. Grass. Who buys an egg and cress sandwich? 
well, people who don't want to get absolutely hammered. People who are sensible, and then I did kick your coffee over as well. You did. Yeah, 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 that was a mistake. Your big, your big, um, Probably could have, made, could have made some quite funny videos on Saturday, which is uh, big goofy boots. Quite, quite unfortunate. I've just found it was Simon O'Regan who asked the question about Hutton yep. being captain. I would answer, answer Lob's question, but to be honest, I think it's a silly question, so I'm not going to answer it. No, <laughs> no offence, Lob. Uh, I mean, Ben Hopper, he hasn't come up with any chance for a while. I think I've got a potential chance, you know, for the goalkeeper. I'm a bit embarrassed to do it. Go on, then. I'm going to give myself another week to work on it, I okay, think. Okay. I think it's a good one. You probably, are you any good at singing? Oh, phenomenal. Yeah. Voice of an angel. We might wait for Tom next week to sing it, <laughs> to be fair. Uh, he's come up with a look alive for Tom, which again, I didn't, like, I didn't think he looked anything like, like him. him. So we'll, we'll glaze over that one. Luke Redding, who I saw on Saturday actually in the pub before the game. Was if everyone there? was fit, what's our best back four? We're going to end with this one. What's our best back four? Everyone's fit. I mean, I don't know why I'm repeating it, you've all just heard it. Everyone's fit? So everyone we've got at the moment, just to clarify, everyone's um, fit. Um. I would oh, I'd bring back bring back Bree. No, ignore Bree, he's not there. Okay. Uh well then you're gonna to have to go with Hutton, Twanzebe, Chester and Mings. Do you think maybe when uh Twanzebe's back he might go to right back? No. I know he didn't do very well there in the Bruce. Game, he never yeah, but do you not think under a more attacking brand of football he might be a bit better? Could be. Again, I'm just today I'm just throwing things out there. See I love Melberg. But he was never a right back. He I think there was Quella. We had a great spell with playing centre backs. Only right loved back. to play, Only loved that, and he was just awful on the ball. I like, think if you had a left back that was excellent going forward, that kind of works because it sometimes evolves into a back three. It's a weird Bima, didn't it? He was just boom. It was great. Phenomenal. Yeah. Had, like, he's not been replaced. Phenomenal. Properly. Um, yeah, twins a bit right back could be a good shot. I'm just throwing out. They wouldn't be my pick. But for me, you're playing four centre backs across the back. I'd pick four. the same back four as you. Hutton because he's the only right back we have the club. Al Mohameda. Yeah, you well, go mm, Actually, yeah, I forgot about El Mahamadi. First delivery, El Mahamadi. But you change, you first defense. Time much to change your yeah, mind, doesn't it? I'm going to rewind that. I do El Mahamadi, right back. Okay. I think, think I think going forward, he's better on the ball, and he gets he doesn't get enough credit for his assists. He's low on low on confidence at the moment. But he's low on confidence, and he's prone to a mistake. But so is Alan Hutton. He put out quite a weird tweet, El Mahamadi, on Saturday. It was like just a load of emojis. I, didn't Muhammad, say, you know? uh, I don't follow. I, was like, I felt like it was like I'm not playing. We like sarcasm. I don't. I could have completely imagined this. By the way, if anyone did say that, let me know in the comments. If I one, if I did say that, uh, two, what it meant, what it meant, because I couldn't really work it out. And then a lot of the replies were in a different language that I didn't understand. He's got like one and a half million followers on Twitter. He's huge. It's big in Egypt, mate. It's huge. Big, big, big in Egypt. So you're back for then? Hmm? You're back same as you did at first, Hutton. But I'd have Hutton. You know Hutton. Yeah, I think Hutton, Twanzaby, Chester, and Mings. Obviously, yet to see Mings at left back, so we don't know. But well, I'm yet to know. I'm, not, I'm obviously yet to see Courtney Hawes in action as well. Mm. I don't really know much. I'm not seeing him play very much. Didn't have a great debut, but I mean, I think we can forgive him <laughs> <I> <laughs> coming yeah. onto the wreckage at Wigan. I think we can probably <laughs> forgive him. Don't be one of those fans, Dolan. No, Just okay, forgive him. Sorry. You, I, I always hard back to it. My dad always tells me about tells me this story. Hugo Ekiog apparently had one of the worst debuts you will ever see. Ever known to man? Apparently, he, he was. was, just, he was just didn't thing. even look like a footballer. No. Honestly, people will talk about it. We'll go down in folklore, I think, because I've heard it off lots of people. Who was his debut against? I, I don't know, but apparently he was horrendous. Yeah. But then he turned into one of the best centre halves yeah. I've ever seen play. Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace, Hugo. Got him on the back of my shirt mm. this season. Still think about that a lot. What a, he was a phenomenal defender, but Paris. got off to a bad start so by the sounds many, of it. We've had actually, we've had so many phenomenal centre backs. I think we had a lot of likeable centre backs as well. No, but a lot of centre, no, no, no. But I'm saying, why not? If you were to pick a position of favourite Villa players where you could reel off the list of your favourites, yeah. I think centre back would probably be the easiest one. Larson, Melberg, McGrath, Southgate, Quellar, Chester, Ekiog. Ekiog. There's loads. <sighs> I've just said there's loads and then failed to name what, another just one. Named seven off the bat. Stormson like. played a lot of time at centre back. See, he was my hero as a kid. Well. I used to have a wonderful effort. Ricky Schimmicker. No, it wasn't, wasn't up there for me, but... Um, I've probably told this story before, but I wrote... For some reason, when Ricardo Schimmecker broke three, he never even played a game, but I wrote him a letter. Yeah. I, was probably, I could probably find it somewhere in my mum and dad's loft. Wrote him a letter just saying he was one of my favourite players. I'd never seen him play. I don't know why I decided this at however old I was, 11 years Did old, he, yeah, 10 but it 10. is. It is. Mate, he wrote me a letter back, really nice letter. Time. Sent me his sent a signed picture. Yeah, those were yeah. the days, huh? He went on to have a decent career. Sure, I used to do that quite a lot. I don't know whether it's a done thing now when you're a kid, but I used to write a lot of letters to the players and get 
get replies back. No, I didn't do it. Rollo did an interview with Grealish for AVFC official, and he said he wrote Petrov a letter, and he never got a reply. Yeah. Yeah. I, remember, yeah. I got a few replies. Tommy Johnson, Southgate. Southgate? Schumacher. Oh, yeah. Can't remember who else I wrote to. I just I just message them these days and offer them gig tickets. <laughs> That's, That's what I do. I mean, yeah, it's not really comparable to what I'm talking about, but <laughs> fair play to you. You've, you've, you've managed to drop it into the drop it into the conversation. <laughs> good. Someone did ask about your name dropping, actually, Omar. I said, are you embarrassed hey, about your name dropping last week? Who's Omar? I was going to on Twitter. I was going to reply saying which one because it could be could be any name. Could be any name. Are you the worst name dropper of them all? I mean, I'm not. Uh, I think you are. And if I am, it's only because I've got it from you. Rubbed off on me. I don't name drop. Yeah, right, mate. Let's end the podcast there with yet another lie. I don't. I call this podcast Liar, Liar, Dolan's Pants Are On Fire. At this rate, you've told about seven lies through this no, through this no, podcast. No, no, no. Thank you ever so much for listening to what might have been a pretty big ramble at times, but I've, I've, I've had a good time. Yeah, the quickest I think, 60 minutes I've been involved in. Yeah, I was quite glum coming into the podcast, but I felt again, like, just doing it and talking about football, I've, I feel like I've had a laugh, so I yeah, appreciate that. that's what it should be about. should yeah. be a laugh. I've had a good time. I've had a good hour. Probably yeah. been the best hour of my day. I mean, bear in mind, I've been at work in the gym, so there's nothing great in there. No, I'd be That's yeah. probably been the best hour I've had today. Probably 10 degrees here yeah. as well. Good stuff. Thank- thanks, mate. Been been a pleasure to have you on, and thank you, as ever, for making the effort to come. I'm not sure why I'm thanking you, because I never thank Tom. No, you never thank, <laughs> you, you thank anyone. No, I don't, but I appreciate you coming in today, because obviously things haven't been great for Villa at the moment. Nope. But you know what? We've dissected it as, as best we can. Mm-hmm. We've had a good hour. So yeah, thanks for listening and watching. If you're not subscribed to the Villa View with your post notifications on via YouTube, then if you can do that, that really helps the channel grow. And again, we've been poor with the comments, me especially. Actually, no, Tom Julian especially. <laughs> Just comment below if you've enjoyed the podcast, answer some of the questions we've thrown out, give us your thoughts on Saturday. Rollo and James Rushton have recorded a match preview tonight very early, but I suppose the game is Friday, so that'll be out sometime after the podcast. There'll be fan cams on Friday as well. I'll be doing fan cams on on Friday. I had a prior commitment. No, I'm staying down. I'm going to stay down on Saturday. See my mate. No, no, nothing. Not my wife's birthday. So I'll be doing a. She had a birthday, so she's not going to have another one in a few weeks. So I'll be doing a. Yep. Fan cam. So make sure you come and say hello and give your thoughts after the game. God, I hope we win, but Sheffield United is going to be a pretty stern test. Tough, tough. And having already watched us get stumped once by Sheffield United, I'm a bit antsy at maybe watching that again. But let's try and be positive. Hopefully we'll be talking about three points to the Villa. Thanks ever so much. Up the Villa. Up the Villa. Cheers. Cheers. If you enjoyed that video, why not watch another? Click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo there on the left. Easy peasy.